Hi, and welcome to my third installment in producing my uh, uh, short animation, uh, Battle of the Nutcrackers. And I'm going to continue on with my uh, pre-project planning. Uh, what I've done here is I've uh, put together a, uh, some very basic models that I'm going to use in a uh, previs and shot blocker. Uh, basically, I have some very rudimentary buildings here, uh, which will eventually be individual little buildings. I've got a ground plane. In my opening shot, I have a tumbleweed that I've got uh, rolling down the ground, and that's represented as a simple cube, because I don't need anything spectacular for all this. I've got a little basic animation on it, where it's rolling down the down the scene and I've got a camera that is sitting way back over here in fact I probably need to kind of pull it out just a little bit and uh, that's pretty much it uh, I really don't need anything more than that right now it's set to blender render if I was to do a quick uh, render you can see this is my uh, scene as it sits and that's pretty basically what I want. I want a ground plane, uh, the street about 30 foot wide, and then the rest of the buildings kind of angling down a lot like I did in that one uh, sh uh, shot, my uh, research uh, that I did. However, uh, I don't want to do this in, in uh, Blender Render. I want to do this in Render Man render and so I'm going to change the render to that. Uh, another thing you can, should notice here is that my scene is rather big. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it until I put it back to Blender Render here, but if I... you notice I got this set to Imperial. If you look at my sizes here... oh I think I can see it now. Let me see. There we go. You can see that my ground plane is 168 feet by 261 feet because I set this scene up for feet and inches, I think in feet and inches. It never really converted to the metric system. My uh, row of buildings here is 100 foot long. Uh, this building here, these row of buildings here is 100 foot long. And I want to build everything to virtual scale because if I'm going to use Blender Render, or if I'm going to use uh, uh, Render Man, that's all uh, PBR rendering. And in order for things to work correctly, the shaders to work correctly, you really do need to build in virtual scale. So let's take a look at this, and let's go ahead and get this set up for Render Man. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my world, and I'm going to add a Render Man node tree. And at that point, I need to just delete this light because I'm not going to need it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my color temperature. Now, and I'm going to enable temperature. Now, one of the things with this feature is that if I bring this out over here, you can see that the sun uh, is a black body radiator and the effective temperature is about 57,000 or 58,000 Kelvin and on up to about uh, 59 or 5,900 Kelvin. And so I'm going to just kind of take the median here and I'm going to set this for 5850 degrees Kelvin and that'll work out well for me. Uh, the tint, I'm going to check that here in a minute, but the sky here, uh, the sun temperature, I'm just going to make it just a slightly yellow. And the other thing here is the uh, sun direction. Now I want this to be high noon. And there's two different ways of doing this. I can either enter in the sun direction according to X, Y, and Z, or I can change everything to Helidon, where I can set the month, 
day, year, hour, time zone, latitude, and longitude. So if I come over here and I say, okay, let's say I'm going to do the seventh month, July. And um, let me see, I was born on the 4th of July, so I'm going to put that there. And this didn't really go right. I wanted this to 7. There we go. And the year I'll leave at 2015. The hour I'm going to make it uh, pretty close to noon, so I'm going to say 11 o'clock. The time zone, I'm going to set it for Arizona. Uh, and the time zone in Arizona, I believe, is a minus 7. And if I come over here, uh, let's go uh, Oops, longitude and latitude for... Uh, to you see as Tucson Arizona there we go it'll pop up here and click on this and there's all my information so I can set this up here I'm gonna move this off screen and it is if I kinda hover over here it's positive for north and the land uh, longitude excuse me, the latitude is 32.15.12. So I'm just going to say 32. And the latitude or longitude is 100 almost a hundred and ten point five and it is negative for east so that's a hundred and ten minus a hundred and ten point five okay that is set up uh, sky haziness I can just uh, the sky tint I can set that up here and I actually went out and did a color grab on that and I took my uh, uh, smartphone out and I pointed it up to the sky. I've got a color grabber on my sky on my uh, phone and uh, let me pull it up here and do, 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 do. it saved out and it says it's Maya blue and if I come over here and I go to hexadecimal I can put those hexadecimals in so it's 71 B9 F4 and enter and that's what the sky looked like on a bright sunny day where I was located which is not Tucson Arizona but that works so if I do a quick render Let's see what that looks like. Well, there we go. Now you can see also that I've got a lot of clipping here because my scene is so big. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to go ahead and stop that render. And if I... Uh, go to my camera uh, my clipping is quite close so I'm just going to change this I think to 500 feet I'm going to leave the start alone for now and in my camera presets I'm going to go ahead and use a Canon 1100D because that is currently the camera that I physically own and I think I'll get a better idea of I know the settings on it and so that's what I want to work with so I'm going to go back and I'm going to re-render this and it'll be coming up here pretty quick any day now and you can see that's just a lot better okay the other thing that I really uh, would like to fix is my uh, 
setting on that and if I go to my camera here I am in perspective but my focal length is way too narrow and so I'm going to drop that way back I think to right about here I think that's a good focal length right there and that'll work this will be a nice opening shot if I uh, kind of run this down here that'll work for me and I know that my opening scene is probably, I'm going to set it for about, whoops, let me stop that. I'm going to go ahead and set this for about, oh, 15 seconds. I don't know if it's going to be that long, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and set it for that for right now. And I can take out, let me see, here we go. So 15 seconds times 24 frames per second and it'll, I'll need 360 frames in order to accomplish that. So 360 frames and I'll just go ahead and set that right to there and I'm going to go file and I'm going to save as and I'm going to save that as end. And you can see I've already called it scene one, shot one, because that's going to be my shot that I'm going to do. And it'll save at any time now. Here we go. It's going to work. Here it comes. All right, good. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to kind of set up my, uh, my now see, if we remember my storyline, let's go ahead and kind of come up here. If you remember my storyline, uh, the sheriff is going to be sitting right about here, and Black Bart is going to come rolling into town, and he's going to uh, park his trusty steed right there. The two are going to spot each other. The gunfight ensues until they meet the, in the middle of the street. They end up shooting each other, and uh, Black Bart, uh, well, they both kill each other. And it, when their ghost leaves their body, Black Bart rises into the heavens, and, well, the sheriff goes someplace else. And that's the twist to my whole deal here, other than the fact that they're all going to be, um, well, uh, they're going to be nutcrackers, so, and it's, they're going to be set in a fairly realistic setting. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add uh, just a little bit of color so I get a, just a little better feel to this whole deal. So selecting my ground plane, uh, I'm going to add a Renderman node tree and the base color right now is kind of set to that blue and I'm going to kind of change it to kind of a yellowish sandy looking kind of thing. Uh, this uh, specular is way too high so I'm just going to drop that all the way down and I'm going to give it a roughness of uh, pretty high, uh, let's say 0.8 and that's the only adjustment I'm going to make on that. And I'm going to call this uh, material. If I come up here to my environment, I can just kind of drop that name right into there. And let me expand that a little bit. And I'm going to call it Ground Mat. I'm really big on naming everything. OK, for my buildings, um, I don't know, I'm just going to pick a color. Uh, I'm going to choose a new material there and add a render man color to it. And I'm going to kind of make them a, kind of a wood looking brownish type color. I don't know if that's brownish, woody brownish or not, but it's going to be close enough. And I'm going to run it specular, let's say, down to 0.1 
and the roughness all the way up to oh I'll go 0.85 and I'm going to call this uh, buildings B U I L D I N G S underscore mat for material. <coughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign that to all of these buildings. This goes really quick. And the last thing in this scene. I haven't really got the sheriff in here yet, and he'd just be a stick figure, is my tumbleweed. So I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to add it as a deal there, and I'm going to make it a uh, darker brown, something like that. I think that's dissimilar enough. And again, the specular is way too high. I'm just going to take that to 0.05 and the roughness way up there 0.95 that's like about as rough as you're going to get and I'm going to save if you're working in RenderMan Render I suggest a couple things one save often it's still in development stage and it uh, kind of tends to uh, bomb on you every once in a while and the other thing too is if you are have a fairly good um, uh, machine uh, if you go into user preferences go to system and if you've got CUDA enabled I would change that and go to CPU uh, I know a uh, blender is and cycles is CPU or GPU enabled but render man kind of hates it and you'll end up crashing quite a bit so uh, render man is more of a GPU render and is probably going to stay that way all right uh, this pretty well kind of sets it up let's kind of take a little preview render here on frame one and I'm going to do a quick render that kind of gives me a little bit of an idea I think the only other thing that I want to do is let's uh, I want to set up a little depth of field and if I go to my camera there we go and I can set up depth of field and I'm going to set the focus well I was going to set the focus on the other but I think I'm going to set the distance to let's say uh, 40 feet and the f-stop should be at 4 because uh, that is exterior is a good f-stop for that uh, the next thing I'm going to do with my camera is I'm going to outline the safe areas on my camera and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the rule of thirds and I'm also going to uh, click on my center and I don't like it that way let's see I'm going to go center diagonal there we go and these are just good guides and you can see that I'm just I'm really not set right so let me take that uh, Y or my X rotation I'm going to kind of move that down a little bit right about to there and then I'm going to set my height up a little bit let's say right about to there let me change my rotation again here to about right about there I kind of want this is where the tumbleweed is going to end up and then I think I want to move forward just a little bit so that my camera is slightly out of view and I'm going to run my focal length uh, I think about let's go 14 
and let's run my camera forward just a little bit and that's perfect I'm gonna go file and save and let's just kinda of run this here kinda of see how that looks and that would be my opening shot now one other reason for doing all of this is I did a couple of tests and what I did is I ran my camera all the way down to the end here and I kinda pointed it this way because this is the way that black part's gonna come into town and I know that that is going to be the most extreme shot on the south end that I'm going to have. And I just wanted to see what's visible and what isn't visible. And so the one thing I did discover is this set of buildings right here, that whole row, completely unnecessary. I can just delete that and I've saved myself a ton of modeling. I haven't quite figured out if I'm going to need this row of buildings yet, and I probably won't even build anything there yet until I get a little further in my shot planning. But it may turn out that I don't even need this set, depending on how I face my camera. That means I'll be able to shrink my ground plane down quite a bit, and because I don't want anything visible out into space. All right. I hope you found. Uh, some of this kind of instructional and uh, and if you don't have uh, <coughs> render man for blender I highly suggest that you do that uh, you can get the non-commercial version I went ahead and paid for the commercial version uh, which really wasn't all that expensive I think I paid about seven hundred or eight hundred dollars for it and uh, uh, but uh, they have the uh, free version, uh, the non-commercial version that you can uh, pick up. And uh, there's plenty of good uh, tutorials on how to set up Blender Man for render. And I think you'd find it ex a great render uh, engine. I, uh, I'm really enjoying it. So until the next uh, video, I will be catching you later. And I also will be uh, putting in my... Uh, I'm going to do a quick render of this and uh, uh, attach that uh, video to the end of this. So uh, you take care and have a great day. Okay, I have rendered out my uh, initial uh, pre-visualization shot. You know, I really have a problem saying that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show it here. It's uh, very low quality, uh, but that's not the point. It works, and there's some things I can learn from it. So let's just take a quick look at it and see what we can learn from it. There's my tumbleweed going down the street. Okay, one of the things I've learned, uh, and there's quite a few things I've learned in this exercise, uh, we uh, was able to eliminate a whole row of buildings that we're not going to need. My uh, camera is pretty well locked in place, so that's saved. My uh, The start place for my tumbleweed is now locked into place, and so that action is available. Uh, but I can see that that tumbleweed needs to go down the street a little bit faster and 15 seconds is a little bit long. So I think with a little more uh, speed to that tumbleweed and also of course with a little variance from side to side that will help as well. Uh, so I think I'd probably cut that down to maybe 10 or 12 seconds and I think we'd be in pretty good shape probably just by speeding up that tumbleweed. Uh, there's a few other things that I've learned, but everything in this scene now uh, has a place. Uh, the ground is locked into its place. The buildings are pretty well locked into their place. 
So there's a lot of stuff that I've learned, and I've also got something that I can put into uh, into my uh, uh, you know my first uh, shot in my uh, in my storyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this here, and uh, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And if you didn't enjoy it, I hope you will enjoy ones in the future. And until then, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.